Well, hey guys, hi. It is Brent Abel, webtennis.com. Back here with a very special video from world-class senior player Fred Robinson. And you may know Fred uh, from Body Helix. He is the owner and creator, developer of what I think are the best high-quality compression wraps on the market. In today's video, Fred has put together a spectacular presentation for us on how to adjust our practice targets so we become way more consistent during our matches. Guys, hi, Brent Abel here, webtennis.com, with uh, my good friend and top world-class senior player, Fred Robinson, sitting here in Fred's kitchen in his house in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, Fred, a former uh, club pro, uh, thinks a lot about the game of tennis. And uh, has got a great concept here uh, about a mistake that we make when we practice. So, Fred, thanks for being on this video and really appreciate you taking the time to put these slides together. Uh, what's going on here? Well, Brent, I've put together a, um, a pattern of tennis balls that we see when we're watching Federer and Nadal, Novak play now on TV. IBM is great because they're showing us ball patterns. Okay. And on the first court, this would be a typical pattern of um, ground strokes from one of those players. And uh, I'm going to move to the next slide and show you what I think this is this is as seen on TV by the tour professionals but I think this is probably a little bit more realistic and what I'm showing here is I'm showing the balls that are not landing on the court and then I'm also showing some net errors which are the okay. unforced errors okay. Uh, tell tell us what the green circle represents green circle is really the center of the pattern the the, the target that's being used okay and um that's really the critical point that I'm going to show in the next okay. couple of slides to, okay. to be aiming at. So that's the realistic uh, pattern of the touring pros. So what you're showing here is what we don't see on TV is on TV we see all the balls that go in that are in play. But what we don't see are the ones that, as you've uh, shown here, the red ones that are going into the net and then the ones in the alley or are outside of the baseline. Right. Okay. It, you, you'll see the number. They'll they'll say you have nine unforced errors maybe in the first set, but they're not showing where the balls are actually landing. Okay. So based on that target area, this is a fairly realistic pattern of, say, the top five players in the okay. world. Okay. Okay. Um, and then we're going to move forward. And what I found over many years of coaching, and I've asked many, many players when they get on the court with me, is show me where you are aiming. Mm -hmm. okay. And let's say that the club players out there that are listening to this, I'm going to give you credit to be as absolutely accurate as Nadal and Federer and Novak and Murray and, and the top players. So we're going to say your ball control is as good as theirs. Now, unfortunately, if you happen to be aiming back there on the corner, you can see with this pattern why so many of your balls are not going on the court. So what you're saying is that our target is way too fine-tuned as compared to the top four or five guys in the world. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, many of the players are trying to do something that is the top players can't do right so it's, right. it's completely unrealistic well it's relative too i mean they're yeah. they're dealing with more ball speeds and the same thing but uh in terms of a target you're saying that we're making our target way too tough yeah okay and and that is not percentage tennis right. there, are, there are no margins there and then also we're going to make about three times as many net errors okay so my suggestion there and you'll see with this ball pattern is Based on this pattern of shots, if, if this is a, an accurate display of what your accuracy is when you're hitting your ground strokes, and we just do one thing and we move our target back in where the pros are hitting, okay. you'll see that the number of errors, the number of balls that are going off the court was reduced dramatically. So why do you think our perception is, is that we have to have a much uh, tougher target than the pros? I mean, is there in the you know, club level, the amateur players mind a thought that, hey, if I leave the ball somewhere where you've got the target right now, that I'm going to be vulnerable. 
I think that's true. And then I also think when we're watching the pro matches, we'll hear one of the commentators say, that was a fantastic shot. It was just inside the line. Right. No one is that accurate. Right. If if they were that accurate, their entire ball pattern would be the size of that green circle over in the corner. Right. But we've never seen that in tennis to date. No one is even close to having that much accuracy. Okay. And so then knowing that the old cliche in tennis is that you know, whoever makes the most unforced errors is probably going to lose that match. What you're saying with this is if we change our target, then uh, if we're, if we're uh, deep from our target, then we're still in the court. If we're you know, wide, uh, then we're still in the court. And so we're making fewer unforced errors, which means that we're giving our, we're giving our opponents a real chance to contribute some points to us. Yeah, absolutely. Our margins now in our percentage tennis has changed dramatically. Okay. So, um, you know, in doing that, you're going to find when you're playing, you're going to be in a point that normally is two or three balls. You may be five or six balls into the point before you give it away. Okay. The players that you're losing to, two, six, three, six right now, if you add one or two balls per point on an average, you're going to be winning those six, three. It's good. So it's a huge change. Good. And that is just, it's not changing a grip, but technique, anything. It is just where you're aiming. Allow yourself a chance to stay in the point. Okay. And you'll see there's still balls over by the line. There's still balls close to the baseline. But uh, your margins your margins are great here. And then, um, so the first thing is, number one, adjust your target. And then the second thing you can do, which is a really easy fix, is number two, is just adjust the height of the ball. Mm -hmm. Add about 18 inches more to the trajectory on your ball. The, the, the pros get, as you know, they get so much topspin. They get great trajectory on the ball. Now, when we do that, you'll notice at the net, we just reduce the number of net errors. Mm -hmm. Went from, I had 15 balls, now we have 10. And then into the target area, and I'll, I'll toggle back here, you can see into the target area, the number of balls that are there now and it's how increased. many more right. balls right. are now in there. And keep in mind, especially if you're playing outdoors, the net is 36 inches high. You have approximately half of the universe above you. Why would you hit the ball into the net when your opponent is at the baseline? Yeah. No, that's true. And I think that one thing that you're showing here, I want to make sure that players uh, don't misunderstand it. Just because you raise the height of the, traje of the trajectory over the top of the net mm -hmm. does not mean that you have to literally hit the ball like Rafa or hit the ball with this massive type of top spin or go to some kind of a crazy full Western or even semi-Western mm -hmm. grip. I mean, you can go with medium top spin and just like you're talking about, just simply raise the trajectory and that medium top spin is not going to go flying out. Yeah, a lot of the club players, if you're looking, they're within about 12 inches of the net. If you put that up, if you just put a racket on top of the net, and stay about a racket height over the net, you're going to find your net errors are going to be reduced right. instantly. Good, good. Easy fix. So uh, you and I went out and hit some today. And um, and you were amazing on the court with these targets. Well, what I just started thinking, though, is after we had this discussion mm -hmm. uh, over the last couple of days is that all I have to do is think about that target that's right in the middle of whatever quadrant we were hitting into. And it's amazing... Um, First of all, how often you hit that target. But second of all, when you feel that you slightly mistimed your shot, that if, if, if you're a hair early, you know, for example, if you're going cross court, that, um, you know, if you're, if, since I'm right handed, I'm hitting forehands, if I'm a hair early, the ball doesn't go wide. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm a hair deep, the ball doesn't go out. Whereas before, if my target's way back close to, you know, a couple feet inside the baseline and a couple of feet inside that single sideline, if you're, you know, if your timing's not dead perfect, you're making unforced errors, and there's no question. Once you start making some unforced errors because your target is so fine, I just think your confidence in the rest of your game starts to take a hit. Well, sure, and your biomechanics change. Uh, when you're aiming for the center of that quadrant, you can actually relax because you, uh, we've heard Paul Anacone talk about it. It's a conservative target which means you can strike the ball even more firmly. Right. You've got a safety. You've got a cushion around you. Relax, go for a little bit safer target, and go ahead and swing free through the ball. Good, good. 
Fred, really great stuff. Thank you for putting together this, uh, this keynote presentation. And guys, if you have any questions for me or for the great Fred Robinson, write down below in the comment section. Let me know. And as always, come on now. Get out there today and make it another spectacular day.